Okay, getting our work week started here on the New York Giants. Uh, you know, one and one football team versus an 0 and two football team, but that 0 and two is very misleading to me. Uh, they lost at home in week one, which obviously we lost at home in week one. Uh, and then they go on the road and they play good enough to win and, and had some extenuating circumstances with the kicker. Uh, so I, I think we know the team that we're facing. I have a ton of respect for Coach Dayball, his entire coaching staff. Um, so we got to play our best football. And that's really what we're focused on is trying to play one game better, play one game better than last week and incrementally have improvements uh, throughout the season. So that's our focus. But with that, I'll take any questions. Kevin, uh, the knee injury to Dewan. Uh, first off, did it occur during the game? And secondly, what uh, what is his status for this week? Is it some? I'm sure you're going to say day to day. But I mean, <laughs> took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, he's uh, injury occurred in the game. He's out today, but can't really go past today. Jack and Jed, as far as their okay, practicing today. So we'll, we'll see. I think, and I understand the questions, guys. I would just tell you, with any injury, you have to concern yourself with that day, how they feel in, in practice, how they feel coming out of practice, those type of things. Is it the same need for him that he had the surgery on last year? I don't know that. Yeah. As you're developing the offense, which takes long to, to get it really rolling up, the run game or, or the pass game to make it? It's a good question, Jeff. I don't know. I, I'm not sure uh, historically what the answer would be uh, in that regard, but uh, I know we're focused on on being better in both areas. Uh, I think we're there's some things that we're doing well. There's some things that we need to improve. Do you think that offenses should, should have an identity? Kind of both <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, I think every football team should have an identity for, uh, for certain. Uh, I think oftentimes your, how you play game to game changes because uh, game plans change and the availability of players change so you may change the style of play week to week sometimes quarter to quarter uh, but there are things that are non-negotiables that you believe in yes this offense is identity right now yeah i wouldn't get too specific in, in what we're uh doing other than to say we you know we want to score some points protect the football you know play complimentary ball obviously how troy had the giant play at the end of that game um, just how have you seen him develop maybe over the last year plus? You know, he kind of started off slow as a rookie, and then it seems like he's come on strongly. Yeah, I think Alex has given us a, a ton of really good reps over his career. He's made some big plays for us in, in big moments. Uh, he, probably the biggest moment for him in, in his young career uh, was that safety uh, last week. But uh, a young player that keeps coming on has versatility in terms of where he can rush, uh, but really excited about his uh, continued growth. Quarterback at Daniel Jones, you know, as a lightning rod there in New York. Just what do you see from him when you uh, watch him on film? Yeah, uh, can hurt you in a bunch of different areas. Obviously, uh, can make all the throws from the pocket, but he is a very, very dangerous runner. We've all seen it over, over the course of time that he is a threat with the ball in his hands, uh, and, and they're utilizing him. Uh, he utilized him in this last game. It's, it's a big part of what he does, but he can also make every throw, and they have – Legit speed uh, on the perimeter, so it's it's a very difficult uh, attack. Center, I think the second play of the game going at left tackle. Uh, is there any chance that he could say it one more time? Zach Zinter, I think the second play of the game was once. He didn't play tackle. Mm -mm. He played some uh, tight end for us. As you move forward, how do you make sure that something doesn't happen like it did at the end of the game on 36, where I, I'm sure you articulated to Deshaun exactly what you needed to happen there, and it didn't go that way? Yeah, so how do you fix that? I, I think every game Mary Kay has le learning lessons for our players and, and for our coaches uh, as well. And I think there's some unique situations that come up. We had a onside kick after a safety. These are all things that you cover. Uh, throughout the, the season, but they, you know, you may recovered it a week ago or two weeks ago, whatever it may be. So uh, it's constant dialogue with your players, understanding situational football, understanding all these situations that come up. Uh, so, so it's just a learning moment for everybody. So did you tell him in the headset, you know, exactly, I mean, did you remind him what he needed to do there or how, how did that go in the heat of the moment? We're, we're moving on to New York, but I understand what you're asking. I get a question on that situation though, that mm -hmm. whole end of the game, do you run it or do you try to get the first down to end the game? Well, I think four minute football, it, these games are so close at, at the end, right? So it's two minute for the offense, 
trying to go down and score. Sometimes it's four minute where you're trying to protect a, a lead. That was a four minute situation for us. So we ran it on first and second down, didn't get uh, enough yards to get into a manageable third down. So now you're trying to make sure the clock is rolling uh, in those instances. But there's plenty of times in, in games where you have to make a decision in terms of how aggressive do you want to be? Do you want to try to go end the game right then and there to your point, Mary Kay? And I think that maybe came up in a one of the primetime games recently. So uh, those are all decisions that you make based on the down and distance, based on the play that you maybe have uh, available to you. Did you listen to WIP Tuesday morning? <laughs> 610 WIP, the all sports, what is it, all sports talk and the all sports station? Uh, a fresh set of downs. What is the value to an offense when you can consistently run it, specifically when it's need two or three to be able to run it and get this two or three? Well, I, I think, and you guys will talk to Coach Doris this week, but Doris has a great way of putting it. He talks about the offense being in the green, having advantageous down and distances. And first and 10 can, is in the green, and then second and I think six, plus, six or less in the green for the offense, meaning the offense has the advantage. Second and 10 is a tough spot. You know, is a red. You know, or maybe it's a yellow, but not advantageous to the offense. So, when you're in the green for a, a big portion of a drive, you're staying out of third down. You're getting explosives on first and second down, whether it comes via the run or the pass. I wanted to ask about Zach too, and using him in that eligible role for tight end. Just like, what did you guys see from him as a rookie that made you comfortable throwing him in there? Obviously, when we better or short on tight ends. Clearly. Yeah, we've we've done it over the years. Um, with tight ends, uh, you know, think James Hudson has done some of that. Nick Harris has done some of that. I go back to Blake Hans has done some of that. So it's always based on who's available to us in the tight end room, uh, and then really who your offensive linemen six, seven, and eight are. Uh, they oftentimes have to take on a role like that. And Zach's a young player. He's a guard for us, but in that pinch, he's got to go out there and play that position. It's very different. You're two people, you're two positions removed from your natural spot. Uh, so he's continuing to get better, but very, very intelligent kid, uh, takes it seriously, uh, wants to be great really in any role that he has. Michigan, I mean, he played one spot in games, but he talked about cross training, like at the three right. interior spots. Like, I mean, have you guys, I guess, seen that he came into the NFL like with some of that experience? Right, you have to have versatility on the offensive line, especially on game day. Uh, you're the first guard in, then you're the second center in. You might be the emergency tackle, all those type of things. Two games, but teams across the league are throwing it shorter than they have in a really long time. Have you noticed that? And is that a product of two high safeties, or why do you think that is? I saw there was a good article yesterday I saw on that. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's definitely the, the increase in two high safeties is a big part of it. Uh, the decrease in man, the increase in zone uh, defense, I think, factors into it. Uh, it's a small sample size uh, early in this season. so. Uh, but I do think that you're seeing more of the defense play uh, a too high look, which can be a variety of coverages. But that protects you, in theory, versus some deeper shots and, and maybe makes the ball uh, be thrown into some check down areas more often than the three deep, where you can maybe uh, rip a seam, rip a go ball, those type of things. Evolution to what we saw the last few years? Yeah, it's a good question. I think there's definitely an evolution going on every year in football. And, and it's something offensive football is changing. Pre snap motion, I think, is one thing that is totally different than it was 10 years ago. Go, and sometimes I do this go put on tape from 10 years ago, and the quarterback maybe is under center on third and six. And there's no motion. If it is motion, it's super slow. You, people are just lining up in two by two, three by one. It just doesn't look like the same game. On the defensive side, every defensive end is in a three-point stance. Uh, nobody's rotating late in the, in the shot clock. Uh, and then there was a lot of man and, and closing the middle of the field. So I think it's, it's both sides. It's change and evolve as a response to the other side. So I think it's constantly ongoing. But I would say for this season, it's probably a little early in a small sample size to make too many uh, proclamations, if you will. Considering the volume of holding calls that have been called against you, um, when did tackling defensive ends become legal? And um, it, going back and watching some of those matchups that Miles gets stuck with, it seems like teams are just very aggressive. You want me to get fined? Is that what you're doing, Daryl? I will say this. I have a conversation with the officials before every game, and I talk about our number 95. He knows that he gets extra attention. He gets chips. He gets a slide to him. Um, officials are going to miss calls. 
but we, we, we expect uh, we expect when we there's an obvious one, we expect it to be called. Do you think Denzel might be able to practice I mean, play a little bit more in this game than he did last I'm game? I'm hopeful. I'm also hopeful, but um, I know on Monday you did not rule out David. Are you still not ruling him out? David Bell. I'm sorry. David, David Njoku. Um, I would say he's unlikely this week. Yeah. OK, so the penalties. Mm -hmm. um, how do you count for seven of them coming in the fourth quarter? Oh, I remember. Uh, yeah, that last drive, Tony, was unbelievable. Uh, to get the ball down there thinking you're going to put the game away, and then you're looking at, what was it, third and 26? 36? Yeah, that's, uh, I, we have to play clean. And, and we, have to, we have to play clean with our technique. We have to be way, way, way better pre-snap. Uh, there is a difference between pre-snap penalties and post-snap penalties, uh, obviously. The, the pre-snap penalties should be easily correctable. Uh, the post-snap, there's going to be some calls that we get called for a holding that we don't feel is a real strong call or uh, those type of things. But when you get into the fourth quarter, to your question, Tony, uh, both sides are tired, but you can't let your technique lapse when you're tired. Um, Mark, you, you say you don't practice them. Obviously, nobody does. Some coaches at the head players take laps when they come to yeah. practice. Are you changing anything? We're being very intentional about what we're doing, Tony. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to ignore the fact that we have the most called penalties against us in the league. Uh, we watched every single one of them as a team. Uh, we're going to correct the ones that we can correct, and we're just going to play with our play really clean with our technique. Uh, but it's something that uh, we'll continue to address. There is Tony. Um, it seems like he's been dealing with like a minor injury. We've seen him walk in you yeah. know, when we come up for practice. Obviously. What's Kadarius Tony, is he closer to being able to practice fully? And then if so, is he potentially a factor? Um, he's not practicing this week, but he's doing a nice job in, in his rehab and doing a nice job in the meetings. How did you evaluate uh, Deontay Foreman going from out of the rotation to play? Uh, ran hard, first play of the game, ran hard, I think eight yard gain. Uh, he, he He's a bigger back, has good vision, runs behind his pads. Uh, is a player that I think will get better with more time in our scheme and, and as we have more time around him. Uh, Malik Neighbors, just, you know, what have you seen, two games, what have you seen of the rookie? How do they use him? I mean, what, 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 what do you stand Well, up? they use him a lot. I mean, second most targets in, in the NFL. They're, they're getting the ball to him. He's very, very fast. He's explosive. He's There's a reason he was drafted where he was drafted. Uh, he, he's He's a very, very, very good young player. Okay. Thank Thanks, guys.